Join me right now on Kumite Radio is Johnny Case. He'll be fighting at Ryzen 14 on New Year's Eve versus Yusuke Yachi in Japan. What's going on, Johnny? Hey, man. Not much. Just uh, hanging out at the house. Let's go back to 2014, your UFC debut, Saitama Super Arena. Take me back to that night, man. Man, that was that was one of the best fights of my career. That's that's one of the most uh, you, you know one of one of the biggest memories I'll I'll always cherish and I'll always have with me. Um, started out that camp. That was my UFC debut, and uh, that camp was like the worst camp I ever had. I remember I got like my teeth knocked out. I broke a knuckle. Like I got sick. Like and I think I only sparred like two or three times for that for that fight. But uh, going into that fight and then stepping into that arena and walking to the cage. I just I, I was just overwhelmed with uh, with a with with a sense of confidence and and just like I'd already achieved I, I've already achieved my dream just by being in that arena that night you know and uh, went out there and fought hard and ended up actually getting uh, uh, a submission um, and, and they ended up awarding me a performance from the night as well so that's that's a memory I'll always cherish and uh, I'll never forget that fight <laughs> said I'll never forget the camp leading up to that fight either that was one of the most uh, one of the most stressful camps I think I've ever been through to this day. So, yeah, it, it must have not been easy because you had to fly all the way across the world to fight. So, from that experience, what can you take into this second trip to Japan? Um, you know what? Like, I really wasn't affected by the jet lag last time. I really wasn't. I I remember when I came home, uh, I was I was kind of my sleep schedule was kind of messed up for like a week or so. But going there, I I don't remember ever really like. Um, it, it feel any different, but then again, like again, it was fight week, and I was super excited and just excited to be there. So that might have played a role as well. But uh, I don't recall ever feeling jet lag. So uh, yeah, traveling has never really bothered me. You know, I, I kind of I always liked uh, traveling to other countries to fight too. It's like a it's like a paid vacation as well. <laughs> you know, so I like traveling. I like and um, I, I like being the underdog. Japan has many unusual characteristics. Anything wild happen during that trip? <laughs> Nothing too wild, man. I kind of I have tattoos. Uh, my legs are tattooed, and um, when I went there, it was summer when I went there, so I only brought like shorts and stuff too. And I remember like going to the grocery store and just getting a lot of weird, <laughs> weird looks. Like people thought I was kind of a criminal or something. I had tattoos all over, but so that that, that culture is a little bit different there. But um, no, I didn't really see anything crazy, man. I had a great time. Like the fans in Japan, like everybody treated me like a rock star. You know, even though it was it was my very first fight in the UFC, like. And they were so like knowledgeable, you know. Cheered when you're supposed to cheer. Like it, it was awesome. I love fighting in Japan. I loved everything about Japan the first time, and and I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to going a second time and and just seeing more cool stuff and enjoying more, you know, more moments in time. Well, you went four and two in the UFC, and you were surprisingly released by the promotion. And I heard you say that it was partly due to your old management team. How important is it for fighters to be very selective about who represents them? What advice can you give to young fighters? Uh, at the end of the day, dude, you just got to do what's best for yourself. Um, you know, unfortunately, there's a lot of politics that, that are at play uh, as a professional fighter. Um, that being said, you got you to choose a winning side, you know. Like I, I, I look at myself like a product. I have What I have sells. You know what I mean? And that... Uh, it comes down to who wants to pay the most money for my for, for my product, you know. So I'm good. With, I, I I'm so excited uh, to fight for for, for Ryzen, you know. Um, I remember when I got cut from the UFC, it felt like I was, you know, like my life was over. It felt like there was such a huge part of me that I that I had, you know, that I had a high regard of, you know, being a UFC fighter. Um, and to now, where it's like I'm living the dream, you know. I've got to fight at another organization and it and a sweet eight-man tournament now i gotta go fight in japan again using pride rules like and i've always wanted to fight pride rules um uh, and, and you know now i'm in the grand prix for for the rising the you know the rising grand prix so i i'm i'm super pumped the way everything worked out you know everything happens for a reason and uh and this is no different i think right now for fighters it's the best time because you got so many promotions around the world willing to pay top dollar for the best product like you said so do you feel the same way yeah, dude, I'm so pumped. A little, you know, a little competition is is great, you know, uh, for business. It keeps keeps everybody on their toes, so to say. So, 
yeah, I'm super, you know, one FC is making moves. Um, Bellator, you know, there's, that'll be a staple for a long time. So yeah, the more the merrier, I say, you know, plus, uh, it, it opens up awesome opportunities like the one, like, uh, Ryzen 14 where Bellator champion Darren Caldwell is actually stepping up to find, uh, to fight Horiguchi for the Ryzen title. So, you know, like that's awesome to me. You know what I mean? And it's like, that's what I, I wish all the leagues would do, you know, um, really find like the best champion the best champion you know like that's pretty sweet yeah it almost seems like mma is returning to the old days where promotions did cross promotional stuff and allowed fighters to go over and test themselves against the best guys in the other promotion yeah absolutely as it should be man i mean we're all in the ass kicking business so we're all trying to find out who the best ass kicker is why not <laughs> why not swap them out you know 2018, it's been a wild year for you. you you've you talked about it a little bit. Uh, you went back to the regional scene, got two good finishes. You jumped into the PFL tourney. You know, you did your thing over there. How has this year been so far emotionally for you? Man, I've grown so much in just this past year from all the experiences I've been through. You know, like I said, fighting, you know, making my dream come true, fighting in the UFC to uh, just finding out when I was at the PI, finding out by some employee there that I was cut from the UFC, you know, like that was a pretty low moment for me, you know, to finding my girlfriend and love of my life to, you know, going back up on the roller coaster, having to take fights on the regional circuit, you know, for no money and pretty much losing money to fight. Um, and then, you know, I got an awesome opportunity with the PFL. Uh, unfortunately I didn't get past the first round of that tournament, but it was all good. It was, uh, it was a great experience, great learning experience, and it just proved to me that you know I can, I have what it takes when the going gets tough to just, you know, put my chin down and just keep moving forward, and uh, and I think that's really going to show in this fight as well. Definitely, you signed to take on Yusuke Yachi on New Year's Eve. Well, you know, you said that this is something that excites you, but what was the reaction around you? Do people know about Ryzen? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, dude. So I train at the uh, the MMA lab in, in Phoenix, Arizona, as well as Extreme Couture's in Las Vegas. And um, oh yeah, everybody's heard of Ryzen. I, as soon as I started, you know, went to the gym, I was like, guys, I got a fight. And I'm going back to Japan. They're like, oh cool, yeah. You know, I'm like, oh, it's it's for Ryzen. I'm like, no way. You can soccer kick and stomp and knee to the head. Like that's so cool. I was like, yeah, and, you know, and it's just to me, it's. Uh, when I when I first found the sport of MMA, I remember watching like old Pride, um, you know, videos and stuff, and thinking like, what is this stuff? You know, what I mean, it's like it's like it's kickboxing, but they're wrestling and they're you know. And I just remember that was being like my first introduction to MMA was watching Pride, and uh, now to to be able to say that I get to go over and basically fight Pride, it's 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 such a huge honor, you know. Something I've I've wanted to do since since I started my career as a as a professional fighter. Is there anybody around you that trains with you or coaches you that giving you advice on how to adjust to the new rules of soccer kicks and knees to the grounded opponent, things like that? Um, no, I mean, I basically, I, I, I train that way now. It's all visual. You know what I mean? Like I know if I'm on the ground, I'm in, I'm in the most danger I could be in. You know, if I'm on my back, I need to get up and that really doesn't change. You know, it's, it, it's, it goes back to basic tactics and combat of tactics, you know, same with like police officers, military, you know, if you're on the ground, you're in a really bad spot get up get up so that's kind of my style anyway um i'll wrestle if i have to i'll you know ground and pound go for submissions but if i get taken down i'm not looking to fight off my back i'm looking to get up and and to get on top so um the rule set now i just i gotta be more aware of the you know like i said if i'm on the ground i'm in the wrong spot if i'm on the ground i need to get up so and it, it's been good it's been actually pretty fun uh working kicks and stomps and knees to the head too so the top it's been it's been a a real game changer for my style you know because with, with that with that fighting style it really only takes one you know one good one good knee one good kick and and that's that's the fight you know or at least it should be so it's been awesome i love i love learning it my my coaches are really smart you know they've been in the game forever um my my good training partner vincent henderson obviously you know ufc former champion so i got all the guys i need i got I got all all the creative vision. I got everything. So I'm gonna I'm gonna really enjoy getting in that rising ring and and be able to fight that style. Adding to that, you're also competing in a ring instead of a cage. What differences do you see? Um, I basically see it more with the wrestling. You know, I'm not I'm 
for, for offensive and defensive uh, differences. But as far as the, uh, the MMA game, nothing really changes, you know. Um, I've fought in rings before. Um, the only difference is it's – it's not going to be a, a grinding wrestling match on the on the fence, you know, for him or for me. So, and getting up off the ground, um, the cage the, the cage helps a lot with with getting up off the ground. So, just working my get ups from the from the open, and that's about it, man. You're a student of combat. You study film. What are your thoughts on Yachi's fighting style? Um, yeah, he's good, man. He's got a good right hook. Um, he he's really tenacious with a lot of forward pressure. Likes to throw that right hook, and then if you can um, pull that head into that clench and come with knees. Uh, I just, I, I, I think he's a lot smaller than me, and I think he's gonna have a, um, he's gonna have a lot of problems when he tries closing that distance. You know, I'm a lot longer. I like to fight long. Um, and I just see it's a bad matchup for him. You know, I'll, I'll, and I think the wrestling, uh, the, the takedowns kind of there a lot too when he when he comes forward hard. So uh, I know it's gonna be a hard fight. I know, I know he's a game world-class opponent um i just see a lot of uh technical flaws and, and and physical flaws too he's a lot shorter a lot smaller frame so i'm just gonna stay long and pick him apart he wants to rush i'll put him on his butt and finish the fight there most promotions they're performance based that means you have to win the fight but Ryzen's a little bit different they reward fighters for how you perform you could lose but if it's a fight of the night they want you back in there instantly right what do you think about this dynamic i love it i love it man that's how it should be there should be no you know it, it, if my job is to go out there and perform i shouldn't have to worry about whether or not i'm getting paid you know what i mean like how many times you see it in, in the ufc you know guys are on one loss and they need to win so they go out there and they just lay on the guy for three rounds you know try to secure a win and uh you know it it, it it's the best thing ever you know we really just get a go out there and perform with no pressure no financial pressure and just go do our go do our thing and uh you put on a good show and that's what it's all about anyway man it's all about the fans well there are rumors now that whoever wins this fight will get an automatic spot in the lightweight grand prix in 2019 is that a more additive incentive for you to just go out there and just smash this guy yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, that's my goal. My goal is to be a rising lightweight champion. So, yeah, absolutely, the goal is to go out there. But I'm not really looking past this guy. I'm just looking at it like another fight, you know. It's, you know, this would be like my 33rd professional fight, 32nd, something like that. So, to me, it's just another day in the office, you know. Uh, preparation is key. You step in there and you're prepared and good things happen. So, that's all That's all I'm, I'm focused on for right now. Derek Cruikshank. He's been out there for a long time. He he walks out to the Rocky theme. Jake Kuhn, Last Rising, he went out there with the Top Gun. What is your walkout? Do you have anything planned? Yeah, I uh, I always come out to Red Hot Chili Peppers. So uh, I think I usually switch it up between uh, Soul to Squeeze and um, <clears throat> Can't Stop. So I think this one is going to be Soul to Squeeze. That's what, I, that's what I came out to my first time when I, uh, when I fought at Saitama. So I'll probably stick with that. All right, the main event of Ryzen 14 is Floyd Mayweather Jr. versus Tension. Did you ever believe in your wildest <laughs> dreams you would be fighting on the same card as Floyd Mayweather? No, nah, man, that's pretty cool to say, though. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, you know, it just, it, 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 it's good for everything. I think, you know, like having a guy like Floyd fight on this card it, it only brings more attention to the card to the promotion and uh, all the fighters on, on on the roster so yeah i'm super pumped and uh you know how how do you pronounce tension how do you pronounce the, the tension name? tension yeah and i saw i've seen some of his fights too that, that guy he's he's tough so i think it's going to be interesting to see man i'm excited and i'm excited to be part of it all right rise in 14 december 31st new year's eve johnny case will face yusuke yachi at Saitama Super Arena. Thank you, Johnny, for your time, and uh, good luck on your fight, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Talk to you later.